Welcome to WOLO, the smart way to learn. Our topic for today is trigonometry. When we look at trigonometry, there are a lot of applications in trigonometry for us. Our objectives for today will be to understand the use of Pythagoras theorem in trigonometry. We we'll also discuss the trigonometric ratios and use it in our calculations. Then the understanding of the angle of elevation and the angle of depression is important. And finally, we'll come to drawing graphs of trigonometric functions and the application of trigonometry in calculations. Let's begin with the definition. The word trigonometry, which comes from the Greek word trigonon, means triangle and measure or metron. So the Greek word trigonon and metron forms the word trigonometry, which means we are looking at triangles and their measurements. This is a branch of mathematics that studies relationships between side lengths and angles of triangles. So there's a relationship between the size of the triangle and the angles they form. Of course, a triangle is a three-sided figure. But as you learn, you realize that there are so many types of triangles. We have the right angle triangle, we have the equilateral triangle, we have the scalene triangle, we have the isosceles triangle, and these all are important triangles. Once we know the angular measurement of triangles, we realize that for the right angle, the angle measured is 90 degrees, or in radians, pi over 2. For the straight line, the angle that is created in a straight line is 180 degrees or pi. And finally, for a full rotation that is 360 degrees, that is twice of pi. Now the Pythagoras theorem. When we talk of Pythagoras theorem, it states that the square of the hypotenuse, which is the longest side in the triangle, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So by the Pythagoras theorem, we can realize that if we have a right angle triangle, then the hypotenuse becomes the longest side, which we can define as C, the variable C. The adjacent, which is the side adjacent to the angle, and here I'll be specific because there's an angle theta here. And so if the angle is at where I've labeled as theta, then we can say that the adjacent is the side. And finally, the opposite is the side which is facing the angle, and so this becomes A. Now, you need to be careful, because the angle can also be at the top. So if the angle is created at the top, let's call it beta, then it changes the adjacent side. Because in this case, the adjacent rather becomes A, and then the B rather becomes the opposite. So you need to be careful about the labeling. 